over at bangthebook.com. We are your one-stop shop for sports betting news and information. Obviously, a slower start for me this week. I'll get my golf preview up today, as well as my daily fantasy picks. Daytona 500 is this weekend, so I'll have a preview for that. Still working hard on my Major League Baseball stuff as well. But Kyle Hunter's daily college basketball picks, Parker Michaels' daily NHL picks, We've got daily NBA stuff from Alan Moody. We've got a lot of great things going on over at bangthebook.com right now, your one-stop shop for sports betting news and information. As you know, this and every edition of Bang the Book Radio presented by our friends over at DSI Sportsbook. BTB200 is that promo code, 100% deposit match bonus for the sportsbook, 100% deposit match bonus for the live casino at BetDSI. It's only a game until you bet it. Two guests on the program here today. We start things off with Brian Blessing, the host of Sportsbook Radio and Vegas Hockey Hotline. Brian, how's it going today, man? Hey, Adam. How you doing? But I'm looking. I'm glad. Thanks for the reminder. I'm looking forward to uh, the return of NASCAR and the Daytona 500 this weekend. It's that ball's behind us, and uh, uh, some other things to watch. And it's, don't kid yourself with, with the NASCAR. Uh, they do matchups, group parlays, and uh, odds to win. Uh, for all these NASCAR races, uh, kind of throwing darts with Daytona, a, you know, the, the nature of the race itself, as we saw with the clash where Jimmy Johnson took the whole field out and won the race. Well, I guess that gives us another thing to talk about here today, because you and I were kind of talking before we started recording here. I've been out of the loop for four days or so, kind of, uh, you know, taking a cursory glance at Twitter as much as I possibly could. And obviously looking at, you know, my score apps to try and see what's going on. But you, know, you you mentioned yesterday you played some golf, took the day off, so you know, you're kind of scrambling a little bit for information here too. And you know, it's it's one of the things that I think is a pretty important point to drive home for a lot of our listeners out there is that you know when you miss a day, you know maybe you try to catch up, you try to pay attention to all the information that's out there, but maybe keep it light with the bankroll. Oh, that, and I would even look. You and I were talking about. We'll get into the hockey as well. It's Tuesdays are always great. You get a monster slate of games, and I, I'm looking at it, and you know sometimes things just kind of jump off the page. Or I'm, or I'm looking at this, look at that. And some of these you got to dive deep, and, and you're really digging it. Sometimes if you got to search really hard, even though there's a, a myriad of games, I may be finding a few things now. The more I'm looking, doesn't mean that there's a. Sometimes the best bet is the one you don't make. Yeah, and especially, too, I mean, you know, hey, this is one of the things that makes it really hard for people that have regular nine-to-five jobs to be consistent winning handicappers. It's just the amount of time that you have to dedicate to this business is, is just so significant. So you know, if you are out of the loop, if you go out of town, if, you know, you're dealing with sick kids or, you know, whatever else, hey, maybe take it a little bit easy uh, in, for a couple of days as you, you know, sort of get back in the pool and you know, you're able to take those water wings off again. But, Brian, I guess – you know, since uh, we're kind of going off the cuff a little bit here today. Anyway, you mentioned NASCAR. Let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, you know, the Daytona 500 this weekend, as you mentioned, it is a plate race. So, you know, it, a lot of crazy things can happen. Crashes, you know, uh, late pit stops, all kinds of weird things. It's a very high variance handicap for the Daytona 500. But in general, what does your handicapping process look like for NASCAR? Um, you know, on a week-to-week basis, I literally uh, NASCAR very much is a horse for course kind of thing. Uh, you know, certain guys like a, a Denny Hamlin or, or Kirk Busch or guys you'd always look at at Pocono. Uh, you know, the road courses. There are certain guys. You know, Kyle Busch is a factor. Uh, it, Truex now has got a different team. Jimmy Johnson's got a different crew chief, and he won the Clash. Uh, the crew chief matters. Uh, so new teams. Yeah, you see, some teams are just horrible in the pit. Some are going to be a driver that maybe had a uh, goes to a new team. All of a sudden, he's got a a good pit crew, and all of a sudden, this guy emerges onto the scene. So, I would think out of the gate, uh, you know, there's a learning curve, and you see what's going on. I would say this: watching the uh, 75 lap clash, which didn't make 75 laps, um, it, it was weird. It, it, the the outside lane was the only lane that was moving, so literally, it, it was like a big thirty car train, uh, and so I think a lot of drivers learned a lot of stuff in that race, uh, and then you go to guys that are good with with kind of the plate racing where you basically your foot's to the floor the whole time, and then there's strategies like Kevin Harvick, 
he he just goes to the back of the back. He doesn't want to be involved in any of the accidents, and the, the serious racing doesn't begin until the final 30, 40 laps. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things, survive to have a chance to race at the end. Yeah, the, you know, and like you said, and, and, you know, my dad is a big NASCAR fan, so I've been happy to write the previews for Bang the Book. It gives me something to talk about with him because I'm not really a big NASCAR guy, but as I've dug more into the research for it, for writing the previews, you know, the horse for coursing you mentioned is very, very accurate. And, you know, some car manufacturers just handle better on different tracks as well. Some of them are better on the mile and a half tracks. Others are better with the, you know, tighter turns and, and the smaller tracks and, it is one of those things where there is a lot of repetition in the handicap, as you mentioned, with that horse for course angle and you know, looking at recent finishes that guys have had. Uh, you know, it's just it's a, a pretty complex market that you know I don't think a whole lot of people really dive that deep into. Brian, you still there? Yeah, you went away. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? It seems kind of fitting for. Uh, the fact that you and I are both kind of flying from the seat of our pants here a little bit on today's show, but yeah, no, uh, I, I lost the last. You went silent there the last fifteen seconds, but are we, are we good? We're good to go. Yeah, we're good. I mean, I, I thought I'd make today into a okay. silent movie kind of show, you know, just sort of uh, uh, hey. black and white and everything. <laughs> Some people uh, you may not complain. <laughs> That's a good point. Good point. Well, if you're going to complain about listening to Bang the Book Radio, then obviously you don't want to do it. Uh, but, you know, I guess the last thing I'll ask you about here with, with NASCAR is, you know, do you uh, – how? Do you, what is your sort of bankroll approach for it? I mean, you know, are you looking to play the mid-range type of thing like you do for golf? How do you sort of structure you know, your picks to win the race? No, well, no. Uh, in, in that last year, and I, I'm going for memory – uh, it, you'll help me. Who was the third guy? It was the big. Th- it was Harvick. I got it. It was Harvick, Truex, and Kyle Busch won whatever it was, like seventy-five, eighty percent of the races. It was. It was one of those three guys. Um, you know, the, the the place where you take a long shot would be Talladega. Uh, you know, places like uh, and, and maybe the you know the road courses. Some different guys step up to the plate. Um, but you know, on, on the mile and a half tracks, it, it's going to be the. It, the guy's got the best car. I mean, you, you can't handle the car. Uh, you, you, can't, you got no answer for it. So uh, out here, uh, I know over at the Superbook, they do, uh, it's called it's group parlays, where there's a, a four guys in a group to win the group, and they're all plus prices. So there's a way, there's a way to do that. You can parlay those uh, that actually produces a nice return. And then there are matchups. Uh, you know, basically, you, you kind of got to go all, all in. It's it's much different than golf. Where when we talk about golf, uh, I, I'll start a golf tournament with three or four guys. Uh, in NASCAR, I probably would go, I wouldn't go any further than, than two drivers in a race. So that, there's, there's just a different strategy uh, with what works for me. You know, I mean, other people can have a different approach to it, but um, that, that, that's worked for me over the course of the last several years. And I would say I've actually. I used to kind of watch it. Well, I'm watching it. Start doing your homework on it. Let's see if we can do some, you know, do, make do a little damage with it. And actually, the last couple of years, been able to do pretty well in NASCAR. So, do you typically, you know, do you try to hit the market uh, early on in the week when the lines just open and try to get some line value, or are you waiting until after qualifying to see how the starting grid sets up? Um, on occasion, I would say yes. Uh, this it's a lot more. It's a different. It's a different attack. I would say yes. That I know I like this guy uh, at this track, or he showed something last week, or somebody you, you pick something up from the broadcast where they figure something out. That you would say, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to take a look at this guy. And, it, and the reason is you you want to make the bet before qualifying because if the guy qualifies and he's in the first couple of rows, his number is going to come down. The qualifying position, honestly, it doesn't mean a hill of beans, Adam. I mean, you see guys uh, they have to go, they, they, they qualify, and then something happens to their engine, and they got to go to a backup car, or they got to reach the engine, and the guy starts at the back of the pack. And by the time you're, you know, 50 laps into it, the guy's running in the top three. So qualifying position means nothing, but, the one thing it does, it has an impact on the odds. 
Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I guess on some tracks it may matter a little bit. Some of the smaller tracks where there's not a whole lot of passing. Uh, but, you know, you talk about some of the other tracks that are out there where, you know, there's going to be, you know, 25 lead changes. Yeah, obviously the qualifying order doesn't really matter that much at that point. So maybe we will talk a little bit more NASCAR with Brian. It's sort of a, uh, you know, a catch-all I, segment here the, on the, the show as we go throughout the, one, the season. The one thing Sorry. I throw in, but I, I would throw in, the one thing I do do, and um, – like it's whatever it's ESPN.com and it was the guy Jayski, J A Y S K I. It's, it, it's, it's amazing the, the kind of work this guy puts in. But one thing that is actually something I look at more more than qualified are the practice times. So they'll have three practice sessions and they're out there for 20, 30 lap segments and say, well, this guy's he's, he's running well. Um, so, so sometimes you can use the practice times. Uh, to see who's actually you know running pretty well there, and then the other thing is after qualifying, stall selections. So the guy that's at the, the the front of the pack in pit row has got a massive advantage, but beyond that, you, know, you look for guys and they'll choose. There are like two or three spots in in pit row that there's a, a big space, and they're very advantageous pit stalls because they've got extra room to pull out without you know, angling in and getting stuck or pinned or hit coming out. So the pit, the pit, there's a lot that goes into it, right? I mean, there's the practice times and the pit stall selections uh, are something that if you started playing with it a little bit, if you were thinking of doing it, those are things that can help you. And it, it really does make a difference during the race when you're watching it. Well, like I said, maybe we'll try to do a little bit more NASCAR here and, and sort of look at those things. I mean, the odds for the NASCAR races aren't out, I believe, until Tuesday afternoon offshore um, I know, I think Westgate maybe opens the Vegas market Tuesday evening, something like that. So we won't have odds to talk about necessarily, but you know, maybe we can throw some tips in here and there about the NASCAR season. But Brian, let's transition over to the ice where we've got, uh, you know, obviously no NASCAR races on ice, but 12 games <laughs> in the NHL here tonight, loaded card, uh, you know, pretty spread out card too. A lot of early start times, some eight o'clock games as well few games that jump off the page to me I want to touch on with you here. Game 25-26 on the board. The Islanders are getting some love here tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. Both teams, I believe, playing their fifth game in eight nights, but the Islanders getting the early betting action. Oh, as they should. They're having a great season. And funny thing is, they lost to Winnipeg Saturday and played one of their better games of the year. Um it was they literally got pinned in their own end on one shift in the third period, and Wheeler scored and put it in. Hart, Hutton's getting the start. Morning skate today. Casey Middlestat left the practice or uh, the morning skate early. So uh, that for Buffalo, that would be uh, a guy they would miss if he weren't able to play. But there's there's a defined sense of desperation for Buffalo right now. And the funny thing is, uh, you know, you have the ten game winning streak and then they fell off the map. But the bottom line is. I think any Sabres fan, i.e. me, uh, at the beginning of the year, if you said in game 55 you'd be 27, 21, and 7, uh, you'd assign that paper and you're in the race. I mean, three points behind Florida. So so they're in it. And I, I think for Buffalo, they can't wait till the 25th. The trade deadline's now. They're, they're wrapping up a homestand uh, with the Islanders and then the Rangers. And – if they short things up in their own end, I think Buffalo's got one final little push in them. Uh, but this Islanders team has just been uh, incredible, Adam. 7-1-2 and two in their last 10. Grice does get the start tonight. They've gotten great goaltending all year long uh, you know, from Leonard and Grice. They're, they're, they're the real deal. And Barry Trotz, I mean, right now, it's, it's the coach of the year, Cooper certainly, just with what Tampa's doing, would be in the discussion. Peters in Carolina. Uh and uh, Trotz on the island are great. And I would make a case, you know, what Julian's doing with Montreal is nothing short of amazing. Uh, so those are the guys that are the front runners for the Jack Adams. Yeah, I was actually I was trying to look here and see if Thomas Grice or Robin Leonard had been confirmed the starter. I, I haven't seen anything yet, but I, that's something I always wonder about here. Uh, you know, with goaltenders returning to play against teams that they used to play for. And obviously for Robin Leonard, I mean, you and I talked about this, I think it was over the summer uh, when his big article came out about the mental health issues that he's been dealing with and, and the things that, you know, he battles on a regular basis. And it, it wasn't the cleanest break from Buffalo. It was kind of a tenuous situation throughout. 
Is that a big angle for you when a goaltender goes back to face his former team? Oh, any player uh, gets jacked. I mean, hey, listen, that, that was the story last year in Vegas. It was guys going back every night. There was a guy going against the team that didn't want him. And he, he'd, he'd play his lungs out, and every night the team would play for that guy. Clearly it's a big thing. Uh, Leonard did already have the game against Buffalo uh, earlier this year uh, in Buffalo. His first game back said it was the toughest game he ever played. They won 3-1. He played extremely well. And, and he, he said, he said he, he loved Buffalo. It, was, it had nothing to do with Buffalo. He had off-ice problems. Um, and it's an amazing – I mean, he's comeback player of the year. Uh, it's, it's just been, been amazing what he's done. Um, so that, that game was – he already played that game. said it was the toughest game he ever had to play. It was a weird feeling, and, and he played very well. But, yeah, guys circle the calendar on games like that. Speaking of circling the calendar, Washington and Columbus. I've mentioned this game in my situational article. I mentioned it here on the show as well. I will mention this point for a long time as a, a sort of Blue Jackets fan with them being you know, the in-state team. They're an Artemi Panarin goalpost away from being up 3-0 on Washington in last year's first round. Hits the post. Washington wins the game, wins a series in six. Capitals go on to win the cup, as we all know. So every time Columbus faces Washington, there's just a little bit extra there. This Columbus team, I have no idea what to expect on a nightly basis. One night they look horrible. Then they go and sweep a road trip. The next night they look terrible. I don't know what to do with this team, but they're a minus 145 favorite tonight against the Capitals. Yeah, I, honestly, but I, I wasn't one that I had circled, but I, I would probably – lean to the caps in the game clearly first of all the price um in columbus when you look at the standings columbus is third in the metro but i would i would say this that i i've got the belief that you know pittsburgh will get their act together here and i would think that the uh, carolinas and buffaloes of the world uh, they're targeting columbus as, as ultimately what's going to be the, the fight for that final spot in the east and i thought about three four weeks ago like columbus is the one that's going to drop like a rock and then they went on a little tear then they dropped like a rock i just think this panarin and bobrovsky thing uh is going to be a huge distraction but columbus gets the, the sweep on the road vegas was in control of the game uh and atkinson got two late goals they ended up sweeping the road trip but in that game the same scenario exists tonight adam uh, Columbus was catching Vegas, came home from a four-game Eastern road swing. Now Washington's in Columbus, playing Columbus, who's coming back from the first game home, uh, albeit only a three-game road trip. That first game home is just a torturous game to play. They, there's just it's it's hap- You know, we've talked about this forever. You know, you're out of town, you're on the road, you're focused on hockey, and you're with the boys. All of a sudden, you come home. You got wives, kids, the distractions, paying bills, go to the grocery store. I, you know, I, it's all. The, it, it's just it's a weird dynamic. You go, oh, they're home, and no, their home is, is can be a very tough thing uh, after a long road trip. One more game I want to hit on here tonight, and then we'll touch on a couple of the games that you like. Otherwise, Calgary and Tampa Bay. Calgary now in second in the Pacific, but with two games in hand. San Jose absolutely rolling right now. They've rattled off six in a row. But Calgary gets a good measuring stick game tonight against far and away the best team in the NHL. Long way from home for the Flames here, but you know when I see Tampa Bay as just a minus 150 favorite at home, it's a sign that Calgary is getting a lot of respect, and, and they probably do deserve it. Oh, they absolutely deserve it. Um, and that is respect from the odds makers. Calgary is a very interesting team. I would draw the parallel that they they were the team this year and like everybody last year. How many times, Adam, did we do the show throughout the course of the year, other shows I would do? This Vegas thing is unbelievable. Like, when's it going to stop? When's it going to end? Well, it didn't end until game five of the Stanley Cup finals. And I think Calgary's that team this year where everybody just keeps waiting for the shoe to drop. Uh, I think they're well coached. Uh, they continue to play well. They're 6-2-2 two, and two in their last 10. But one thing that will be interesting, not not that it, it, it's going to make a difference, they're in the playoffs, um, 
but I think the Pacific Division winner gets a massive edge because that first round matchup between, let's say, Vegas and Calgary or Vegas and San Jose is going to be a really tough series, and the Pacific Division winner kind of sits in the catbird seat when the playoffs gets here. But San Jose is finding their groove, getting away from Calgary for a second. So all of a sudden now, San Jose's caught them. San Jose is a point ahead. Yes, Calgary has a couple of games in hand. But it will be interesting to see how Calgary reacts in the short term uh, because everybody expected San Jose to get their act together. Well, as we look at the rest of the card here for Tuesday night, David Posternock, a late scratch here after the morning skate for Boston. That's why that line's bouncing around a little bit here against the Blackhawks. What else are you looking at on tonight's 12-game card, Brian? Again, it was it was a, a wacky card, and I, I was looking and looking and trying to trying to find something. And you know, the one that, that kind of stuck out to me at least was you know Carolina and Ottawa over just the way Ottawa plays. And this Carolina team, man, don't sleep on uh, you know sleep on these guys. They're actually played really really well. But Marazzi gets the call tonight. He's twelve twelve and three. Anthony Nielsen gets the call. So you get the backup with Ottawa. He's 9-12-1. And, and I just think the nature of the game, uh, that's a higher scoring game to me. Uh, and I know this is the time of year where games trend under, but I think those games really trend under when you've got two teams that are fighting for the playoffs. And, you know, the teams that are out of it, uh, they got nothing to lose. So sometimes the team that's out of it can dictate – the pace of play, and I, I think that could be the case here. So I kind of like the over in that game. And as we were talking, the one that I spotted here uh, is Philadelphia's a high-scoring team. But, boy, they've been a, a different team, clearly, with uh, heart in net. I'm seeing Anthony Stolarz gets the call tonight. You know, And Minnesota's not a team that you, you count on, you know, for a truckload of offense, and Dubnik's very good. But don't Minnesota's actually sneaky offensively. They got size; they can wear you down in your own end. Uh, but with Stolars in there, uh, I'd be looking for that game maybe to go over the total. And that was not one that I had circled until we started talking this morning. And, and you know, virtually every Flyers game six and a half, but because they're playing Minnesota, the totals at six. So that's a game I could see going over the total as well. All right, so we move over to the golf side of things here. And, uh, man, what a field at Riviera Country Club here this weekend for the Genesis Open. Dustin Johnson's in it. He's your favorite. We haven't seen him stateside much. He's been playing over on the European Tour. Justin Thomas, Rory, Rahm, DeChambeau. Bubba Watson's a three-time winner here. Shawfle, a, a California guy. Lefty coming off the win. Spieth, Finau, Woods, Matsuyama, Cantlay, on Fleetwood. Sergio's in this tournament. What a hell of a field here this weekend at Riviera. Yeah, and uh, obviously California, the weather's just been so bizarre. Uh, uh, Mickelson was phenomenal uh, on Sunday. And, you know, Mickelson uh, on the California swing, that, that's a great story. And that was that was a tournament you were watching pretty closely uh, because they're going to be playing the U.S. Open back there at Pebble Beach. So uh, that was kind of interesting to see uh, Mickelson. Yeah, this week in L.A., Cantley, you mentioned, uh, 30 to 1 is kind of a guy I, I would take a peek at. The one, and I won't waste time, I'll go right to the top, and I will absolutely guarantee you he is on my ticket, is Charles Howell III. It, just like the Sony Open in Hawaii and here in L.A., when Howell was, even when Howell was struggling, he would always show up and play well at the Sony Open he had more rounds in the uh, below 66, I think it was, than anyone in the history of that tournament. He did it again a bunch of times. He played well again this year. The other course, Charles Howell always shows up on the leaderboard is in L.A. And Howell is a much better golfer in the last year than he had been for the previous five. So, horse for the course, Charles Howell is definitely on my ticket. Yeah, and you mentioned Cantlay. He was runner-up last year. So, uh, well, he was in the top five last year, UCLA. actually. Kind of, I, I'm, I'm going from memory. Did, I believe. Didn't he play at UCLA? Uh, I, I would have to LA check guy. that. But, but he was the 54-hole leader last year. So, you know, that's a guy kind of looking for a little bit of retribution here. You know, uh, you know, you kind of yep. – you're Good in position fun. to win it, and then, you know, you don't. And so, you kind of got a, a little bit more there. But – 
you know, again, this is a field that's just so strong that it pushes some guys, you know, up into some better prices here. And that may be something that we see a lot here going forward. You've got a WGC event next week. And uh, then you've got, you know, kind of the lead in events to the masters coming up to where some really good players that were 25, 30 to one over the last few weeks are now going to be 50, 60 to one. Some of the guys that we've talked about a lot here that haven't picked up wins, maybe going to have some better prices as we move forward. There's no doubt. You know, this Wikipedia thing's wonderful. I was going from memory, but Cantley was born in Long Beach. Uh, he attended Servite High School. He won the California State High School Championship as a senior and then won four tournaments in his freshman year at UCLA. So rest assured, he has played this course a gazillion times. And that's a very good angle. You know, we talk about horse for course stuff when it comes to NASCAR. It's the same thing when it comes to golf. And, you know, familiarity definitely does help. And, and again, with that stronger field, you know, Cantlay finds himself in the 30 to 1 range as opposed to, you know, 22 or 24 to 1. And every dollar really does matter with these types of events. Brian, I want to ask you about this. You know, we talk a lot about trying to pick the winners of these things. Dustin Johnson. Brutal schedule early on in the year here. Tons of travel all over the place in Europe. Played a couple of PGA Tour events as well. Are you looking to fade him in matchups this weekend? Is that an angle you'd look to play? It would have been last week because he had played, uh, he had won in Saudi Arabia and then then flew back. In fact, he had to make a birdie on 18 uh, Saturday to make the cut. Uh, He was right on the cut line. Now, you know, he's back, he's more acclimated, and this is a nothing, nothing travel down to L.A. from Monterey Peninsula. So I would think he'd, he'd probably have a, a little better bounce in his step. He's more acclimated to the – go ahead, you say it. What is it? Your, 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 your oh, circuitous clock, rhythm. what do you call it? Circadian yeah, rhythm. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that thing. That thing's, back, <laughs> that, thing's back in, that thing's back in rhythm. <laughs> you know, you know he's back on the continent, so I would I would look for a much better effort uh, from Dustin Johnson. But again, eight to one, uh, the price is is not that attractive. But it, travel matters for these guys. It just certainly does. It's like anything. Sometimes freshness can be an asset, or you know you've got rust, and so you got to find out who are guys that play well off a of layoff. You don't know if they get a three week break, are they taking the family to a resort? Or is the guy just shutting it down and he's home and he's doing nothing but practicing, and that could be a good thing. Um, you know, it, 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 there's so many angles in golf. It's, it's great. And the, the beauty of it is with the overlaid prices that are out there. The one I, I'll throw one at you, bud. Uh, I, he's got, he played um, Tommy Fleetwood is you know, now over here. Just like Rory McIlroy's going to be playing a lot here on the PGA Tour. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood's an incredible golfer, and he usually contends uh, – that was not the case at Pebble Beach. Uh, but, again, Pebble Beach is such a quirky, goofy thing, playing with the amateurs, and it's a four-day party. And, you know, some guys are able to, you know, go through all the rigmarole and still play good golf. Uh, but th- this is a golf. This is nothing but a golf tournament again. And it, you're, it's an overlaid price to me. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood at 35-1, to 1, uh, you know, I, I, I know Bubba Watson is playing well. And he's twenty to one, and he's played well at LA. Mickelson's twenty to one. Tommy Fleetwood's every bit as good as these guys. Uh, I'd give Tommy Fleetwood a shot at thirty-five to one to bounce back and contend. Well, and just one more quick note on Dustin Johnson: won it in twenty seventeen, runner up in twenty fifteen and twenty fourteen. So he does play really well here. So be careful with fading him in the matchups. Brian Blessing, the host of Sportsbook Radio and Vegas Hockey Hotline. How can people check out those two shows, Brian? Well, as you said, uh, Adam, we're back on the beam. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff. Sportsbook Radio, Vegas Hockey Outline, noon to 2 Pacific time. Uh, KSHP.com shows are archived at Sportsbook Radio. You can follow me on Twitter, and I'll put the shows out when they're posted, so you can get them off my Twitter account as well. And we gotta, we got to get on the beam here, uh, and we'll, we'll get some videos for you from Bang the Book. We're going to certainly we'll do a golf video. I know you'll have a golf article. And uh, we'll do a Daytona video as well, some of the things we talked about today. And we always have fun doing the videos for you from Las Vegas for Bang the Book. Well, there you go. And you can follow Brian on Twitter, at Brian Blessing. Brian, appreciate the time, as always, man. Thank you so much, bud. We'll talk to you again next week. Adam, have a great day, my friend.